Hey, everybody, it's the Drive to School podcast. I'm Pastor Goodman, and my friend, Pastor Matt Richard, is back. How are you? It's good to see you, Harrison. Good to see you, too. We're, uh, we're closing in here on Christmas. Uh, it's, it's right in the middle of Advent. Uh, things, are, things are looking up. I'm, I'm actually kind of, it's weird. I, I'm uh, the content executive for Higher Things, which is a really fancy way of saying uh, I'm a pastor like Dr. Pepper is a doctor now. Um, so my, my season's actually kind of slow um, where everybody else is freaking out. So I really appreciate you making time for me here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, you know, I, I, I met with my elders here the other day and they looked at uh, coming to the end of the year and they looked at my, uh, I keep track of my vacation, how much time. And, and so I get this much vacation and I've only used up this much. And Sounds they right. said, they said, you better do something about that before the end of the year. So I took yesterday off, which was great. Um, I'm trying to pull the throttle back a little bit. Um, and uh, we don't have any, you know, people in the hospital right now, so which is good. So, so I've been pulling the throttle back a little bit too here. So, but we won't tell anybody that, that I'm doing that. So, <laughs> yeah, because I mean, there are things you have to appear as, right? Um, one right. of them is busy, uh, and the other one's actually the one we're going to talk about today. Uh, we we want to appear popular. So, uh, what does Jesus say, Pastor Richard, about popularity? Well, I'm thinking of the the uh, gospel lesson for this weekend, where he talks about John the Baptist, and he says about John the Baptist, "Would you would you go out to to see a, a guy dressed in fine clothing? Uh, in other words, a person that was uh, wearing the luxurious clothes of of the rich and famous, uh, somebody that was cushy with with uh, the uh, the word that we're using a lot these days, the elite of the day." And then Paul actually says the same thing about this in in First uh, Corinthians, I believe, is chapter four or chapter five in that area, where he talks about you know. Um, that that uh, a good steward of the mysteries of God is trustworthy with those mysteries, uh, which is essentially Christ and His gifts. And uh, Paul goes on to say, you know, I really don't give a whole lot. I don't really care what other people say about me, what you say about me. Um, only only God judges me. And we understand that context that uh, he's not a reed blowing in the wind. I love that, you know, uh, this idea of a reed. Uh, when I go pheasant hunting, it's kind of fun on the North Dakota prairie. You come up to like a slough and you see like a reed or this wind and and the North Dakota weather is just crazy. You'll have a, a gust of wind and it'll snap this way. And then the wind will go away. It'll snap up. And then you have another wind, a gust this way. And I see that and I think about this idea of the reed blowing in the wind, uh, always what adjusting our message and our character and our disposition based upon what other people say. And that's exhausting. It's absolutely exhausting. And you think about that, if Jesus would have done that, or John the Baptist would have done that, uh, then all of a sudden what we're doing is we're being, uh, a, our conviction and our center of gravity, or our center of, of our faith is then going to be based upon which way the wind blows. And right. it blows that's actually why, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. That's actually why John the Baptist was, was martyred, right? Because he wouldn't go back and forth, whichever way the culture wanted him to go, whichever way the powers that be wanted him to go. He, he stood very firm in, in the word. Yeah. But it's so, it, it, but here's the thing. It's so tempting for us. Uh, we want to be liked uh, as human beings. We want to be liked. We want to be uh, included. Uh, it hurts when we're not included in a group. It hurts when we're not included in a certain segment of the population, or we see a group of people that they look like they have it together and we want to be with them. We want to be accepted. We want to feel uh, like we're approved. And then we feel like, oh man, if I, if I want to be accepted by the group, I have to say a certain thing or act a certain way. And then all of a sudden uh, we do that, but then we lose our conviction. We learn, lose who we are. We learn, we lose who we are in our baptisms. And uh, so when we look at this, look at John the Baptist, uh, he really sets us straight for us that he's not going to be a reed blown in the wind. Uh, you know, Paul says this too as well. And uh, the whole point, what would Jesus say about this? It would be basically this, abide in me. Stay yeah. put. Uh, abide in me and I in you. Uh, remember you're baptized. Remember you're baptized, you're baptized as a Christian. Remember where you belong. Remember the gifts that are for you. Uh, that it is not about what people say. It's about what my holy word, my holy writ says to you and who you are as my baptized child. So stay put. Uh, it does not matter what the waves and the winds, which way they're blowing, remain in me. I love that. And what you did there was so brilliant because you, you you didn't sort of pick one side or the other. And you didn't even just try to like split the hairs and meet in the middle, but you just said, where is Jesus? Um, because we can take this to, to sort of extremes. Like I will I will say as loudly as possible or I will tweet as loudly as possible uh, so that everyone will know that I am right. And it doesn't matter what anybody would think about me because I am I am right. Um, and well, it, it's not just sort of winning the argument, but actually speaking truth in love to, to the neighbor. And, and finding comfort in Christ and his word. This is not about sort of uh, shouting down a culture, but but clinging to the thing that's actually going to endure when culture 
when culture ultimately dies, because that's the thing you have to recognize that Herod, Herod killed John the Baptist, um, but, but Herod's not here anymore. And now there's Herod's kingdom. The, the thing that uh, had such power at that time that fell and we, we have all but just a, a shred of evidence that it even existed in the first place. Um, but the word of the Lord is still standing. And, and John the Baptist is in heaven right now. Uh, but the other side of this coin is to sort of say, well, God doesn't care what anybody thinks about me. And, and that's not true either, because, well, he actually gives an eighth commandment to sort of shelter your name. He actually cares how people speak about you so much that he says that that when we, we speak about our neighbor and when our neighbor speaks about us, uh, that, that uh, we should not uh, tell lies about them, betray them, slander them, or hurt their reputation, but uh, explain everything in the kind way, uh, defend them, speak well of them, all of these things that our catechism gives to us. Uh, the thing is, though, it, it, it's that we're not going to change who we are. We're going to be baptized. What, what is your identity? Well, you're, you're a sinner that Jesus died for. And since that forgiveness is, is so important, since that, that, uh, that, that truth, both of the law and the gospel, is so vital, not just for today, but for all of the days, long past when the wind is done blowing the reeds around, that's what we want to hang on to. Yeah, you know, I, I'm reminded as, as as you're sharing here. I'm reminded and thinking about all this when I was in uh, junior high. You know, I played hockey, and so then I was a hockey player. So I was in the hockey group, and then I remember uh, I quit hockey. And then all of a sudden you come to that lunch line, right? And you get your plate. And at least where I grew up, you get your plate and you get your food and you come up and you have that car and you swipe it with the lunch lady. And then you kind of come up, grab your silverware, and then you stop. And there's this all these tables and the round tables, and then it's like oh my goodness, which table do I go to? And for the longest time, it was always the hockey table, but I'm like, okay, I'm no longer a hockey table. And then it was like, okay, there's a farm table, like with all the farmers, uh, farm kids. And I'm like, nope, can't go there. And then there was the, there was the basketball table. I couldn't go there. And then it's just like, you just, you're just paralyzed. And, and this is what we do with life. Even adults do this. We, we, we try to pick that group, but here's the reality is, is today's popular group is going to be tomorrow's irrelevant group. And maybe today's relevant group is going to be the future popular group. And it shifts on a dime. It just moves back and forth, left and right. And, and, and Paul talks about this too, about um, us as Christians, that we're not children. We're not little uh, infants in Christ. We, we are receiving his gifts, but, but the, the imagery is that we're not, we're not just a, uh, uh, an infant being bounced around or blown we around fall, by, by every... Reason. Yeah, by every wind of doctrine in this world, left and right, we are stable in Christ. We're stable in the foundation of Jesus. Um, we don't build our house on shifting sand. Our house is built upon the rock, which is Christ. And so for uh, the youth that are listening, uh, it, our baptism is our hope and our identity, uh, making that sign of the cross, knowing who we belong to, that we're children of God, belong to the kingdom of God, regardless of what the world is doing. It doesn't matter. And we don't react. Like you said earlier too, if, if, if one group goes this way, we're not a pendulum and we do this. Uh, it, it's, it's not reactionary. We're what? We're centered in Jesus and Jesus is stable. He's consistent. Right. It's actually sort of when you get to what the core of popularity is, popularity is being liked. Uh, but but for us, being loved is more important. There, there's a oh, difference yeah. between being yeah. liked and loved. Love is is eternal. That the, the love that yeah. the son has for you upon the cross will not go away. Think about the things that you liked 10 years ago. And, right, and like right. especially when you're in high school. Like 10 years from high school, you were you were maybe six and playing with ninja turtles. Like, is that still what you want to be known for? Um, what 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 people like changes very quickly. And this is sort of the danger of trying to live according to popularity popularity is that 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 is just not going to endure that that is a a mountain that you are always trying to climb up and honestly the, the problem with trying to be at the top of that one is that you have to stand on top of everyone else to do it but but to be loved means you can be at the very bottom and still yeah. have an identity that is firm that that will not pass away yeah yeah when when, when you are loved in christ then guess what you can serve your neighbor and it doesn't matter who your neighbor is you get to what love everyone with art without without partiality uh, you can just whether whether it's a hockey player or a basketball player or a farm kid, it doesn't matter because in when you're in Christ, your identity is in Christ. It's unshakable because your Christ has risen from the grave, and that you belong to Him. His nail mark hands are proof of your forgiveness and your eternal life you have in Him, and that you're baptized, you're sealed in Him. And so then, guess what? It doesn't matter. You can love everyone. You can serve everyone, even your enemies. You know, even serve your enemies because guess what? You're in Christ, and uh, that's all that matters. Jesus has right. you. And so you can go back around then to where we started this with John the Baptist, who uh, we didn't go out to see him because he wore soft clothing. That, that's, that's for the, the kings and the politicians. We went out to him to hear the word of God. This is how he loved his neighbor. He lived in his vocation. He, he said the things that God gave him to say, all of them. And he 
he, he held to what was good for his neighbor and, and what was, was, was praiseworthy from our Lord. And, and for that, he wears the crown of life. That's, that's what faithfulness is. Not that he earned it, but, but that he was given a gift that was so powerful, so, so awe-inspiring that he hung on to it in the face of everything else that will fade away. Absolutely. Absolutely. Centered in Jesus. So what does Jesus say about popularity? Buy to me. Stay put. You're baptized. Thanks. Amen. Right? Amen. Thanks so much for joining us. Yep. Good to see you, Harrison. Hey, have a good one.